If there really is someone creeping out there and messing with me, then I suppose I should just applaud their dedication and accept my oncoming murder. Not everyone could carry on such activities in this weather. I open the fridge and am instantly presented with the usual array of non-food items and the container with yesterday's meal. I'll eat one cupcake tonight and then I'll have two left. Mm, I'd better have two, actually. This is my first actual meal of the day, after all. Good god, man, you need to, like, eat things on a regular basis. Tomorrow, on my way back from school, I should stop by the convenience store to stock up on the cheapest ramen cups I can find. Wonder if Natsuki would want to join me. On the bright side, I'm not throwing up my guts tonight. Shit, I better crawl into bed and go to sleep fast before I jinx myself. With a newfound sense of urgency, I change out of my uniform and into a loose-fitting black hoodie and a pair of shorts. My favorite pajamas. Yeah, I guess pajamas can't really be anything comfortable enough to sleep in. To sleep, for a chance to dream, I, there's the rub. For in this sleep of death, what dreams may come. He's all waxing poetic again. Spending time with Sayori will make her happier. However, if you prioritize her happiness over your friendships or responsibilities, you will become dependent on her. Thanks, Tooltip, for pointing out to me that Sayori does, in fact, still exist. Hiya! Just kidding, I'm not one of those cartoon characters who obliterate their alarm clock in the morning. Especially since that alarm clock is my phone. All things considered, this shouldn't be such a bad day. I actually have someone to share my morning walk with, even if that someone's energy levels don't exactly align with mine. Home is today as well. Wonder what Natsuki and I will be baking today. Maybe Yuri would like some a pastry or two as well. <laughs> would like some a pastry. What? Okay, enough idle musing. Time to face the day. The cold, the dark, dreary, rain clouded day. You know, with how sore I was on Tuesday and how sick I was Wednesday, this is the okayest morning I've had in recent memory. A good omen, perhaps? Yeah, I continue to try thinking happy thoughts as I gather up my uniform. Silver linings or whatever. My body craves the warmth of the shower. Even with the heater running, it feels like the days are getting colder and colder with each one that passes. And it only gets worse with my clothes thusly stripped. I practically leap into the shower once I feel the air against my skin. <sighs> Much fucking better. The frigid air slowly melts away and transfigures into steam, fingers of water running down my skin like the warm touch of a lover, I think. I don't actually know what that feels like. I made a new friend yesterday. Or, acquaintance is probably a more prudent term to use, but it was the girl at Miyazaki Library. The girl whom I had ignored and who ignored me, with whom we spent quiet hours unbothered by the other's presence, lost in our own worlds. The book... On too high a shelf. No step stool to be found. Here he just happened to come by and witness my plight. It could be mistaken for some kind of cosmic event. Reading in silence was comfortable, yes, but in truth, I've wanted an excuse to talk to the mysterious girl in the library ever since I first saw her. And the stars aligned, the universe handing me the excuse on a silver platter, and what wondrous evil fortune, she didn't seem to mind talking to me either. If I had approached Yuri and simply spoke my mind in the first place, would she have startled, ran, and disappeared forever? Probably. She was so much more awkward and nervous than I would have guessed, and her fears and anxieties she wrote of in the mor evening. They were almost verbatim for how I would describe my own feelings. Does she truly read me so easily? Like a mystery novel with none of the mystery? It's a little terrifying, to be quite honest. Not since I was young have I felt this way in front of another human being. So very vulnerable and easy to see. But maybe... Just maybe she won't try to hurt me. 
okay, she's too busy hurting herself. But the psh. And those are my shower thoughts for the day. All right, bathwater, it's time to face your doom. You just let that pile up, bro. I am dried, dressed, and smelling like a peach. Literally. Okay, now he's talking about drying himself off. My conditioner is peach scented. Should I take one more look at myself? All right. Here, look. This is like the last day of the mod, so we'll like we'll cycle through all the expressions. Okay. How's about show me a sad face? Okay. Okay. Now, now give me a frown. Give me a frown. That that's your frown. Okay. Now let's get back to neutral. Back to neutral. Okay. 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 No, uh, uh, let's look surprised. Look surprised. Oh God, he looks terrified. <laughs> Practice your expressions, and we finish off with a smile. There you go. Once again, stop being so damn gloomy. I give my mirror self a finger guns gesture of farewell. He reciprocates politely. What a douchebag. What in the... Someone's calling me. Oh, shit. It's Yuri, the girl from the library. I stare into the reflective surface of a hanging frying pan, straightening out my hair before realizing she can't actually see me over the phone. Just answer, you idiot. I don't know what do if you do a video call. Huh? Silence pervades on both ends of the call, with the sound of air filtered through the phone's speaker being the only confirmation that there's anyone on the other side at all. <laughs> Hello? Good morning. S sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to... Oh no. oh no, it's fine. I'm the one who should... The both of us managed to shut up before this ridiculous exchange of interrupted greetings and apologies can continue. I exhale, and hold the phone delicately in both hands, as if it could shatter with a single touch too rough. Uh, is there a reason you've called me, or, or perhaps you've done so on accident? No, Holly. My calling you was quite intentional. Uh, and, you know, I had any reason to phone a friend in the morning, other than to hear their voice? Ah, uh, no, that's... That's so sweet. Thank goodness Yuri can't see my face right now, and the red hue it's no doubt taken on. Mm -hmm. Although, there is perhaps one matter I'd like you to elucidate. Perhaps you noticed I used the pronoun there to refer to you. This is because I am unsure as to your gender. You wear the boy's uniform, and, and yet everything else about you is disconcertingly feminine. Not that I find you disconcerting to be around. It's only the mystery of what you are that gives me pause. In fact, I'd say- Yuri! Yuri! Remember what I said about slowing down to breathe and gather your thoughts. Right. Right. Th thank you, Ellie. I take a moment to follow my own advice before I answer. I I'm a boy, as the uniform suggested, and I've always been one. I- I- I see. Good. Good? Uh, oh, th heavens. Did I really just... That's not what I... Uh, I'll um, talk to you later, Hallie. Honestly, she probably did us both a favor by hanging up like that. Wait. What the hell? Jesus. Something cracked the absolute fuck out of that window. Did you forget already, bro? Must have happened overnight. Unsurprising, given the weather, I guess, but still. Mom's gonna flip the fuck out. If she ever comes home, anyway. The news should be on right about now. Kiki17 and that creepy-ass news anchor ready to deliver the latest while hopped up on caffeine and coke. Well, at least he acknowledges the guy is creepy. <laughs> Might as well. Let's see what doom and gloom awaits us today.
This brutal killing took place while a family gathered on a Wednesday afternoon. 24-year-old Yanagi Shoichi allegedly retrieved a hammer and a box cutter from the garage. Before encountering his wife, 22-year-old Yanagi Moyori, the kitchen or in the kitchen, who was pregnant with twins at the time, Yanagi Moyori was found by police dead from internal bleeding and due to repeated bludgeoning to the head, chest, ribs, and stomach. Their four-year-old daughter, who came to investigate the commotion, was also killed by numerous stab wounds to the throat and sternum. When police arrived at the house at approximately 7:30 p.m. after neighbors called 19 or 119, the father had already hung himself, would be hanged in this context, with an umbilical cord he found in the garage. SPD says this string of domestic homicides appears unrelated, though it could be part of a larger trend, such as employment, child care, and other social issues facing the average family. Okay, well, what? The only question I have at this point. Well, first of all, why are they going into such gruesome detail on the news? But. Did, did, I, did I misread that? <laughs> Families are, meanwhile, in case you just stay on the lookout for any strange behavior from friends and loved ones. I remember when Japan was supposed to be one of the safest places to live in the world. Of course, maybe it was always like this. Look at me getting up on my own, getting dressed for school on my own, walking to school on my own. I'm practically an adult. Maturity is an attractive trait, right? Hey, guys and gals, I'm single and a super great catch. God damn, I'm lonely. Whatever, my apparent immaturity is probably my only attractive trait, if any at all. Shit, I need to keep the happy thoughts thing from earlier going. Thoughts, thoughts. Breathe in, breathe out. Put one foot in front of the other and face the day. You've got this, Hallie. At least, this time I won't be facing it alone. I watch the rainwaters flow as I make my way downhill on the rain-soaked sidewalks and all the various detritus it carries to lower elevations. Garbage, mud, probably shit as well. Maybe Natsuki was right. Maybe all the filth really does flow downhill in more ways than one. We live in a society. As I chuckle at my own idle musings, an unmistakably candy-colored figure enters my view. She awaits at a corner, pacing about impatiently. Ugh, what the hell took you so long? But your lazy ass was oversleeping, weren't you? I swear I always get stuck with the flighty, daydreaming, irresponsible types. G good morning to you, too. Phew, are you kidding me? It's an absolutely shit morning, in case you haven't noticed. You and I are underneath umbrellas and in an absolute ass ton of rain right now. Well, well, yeah, but that's been every day for the past two weeks now. Exactly! And as long as this continues, every morning is gonna be a shit morning! Apparently the slasher went and carved up another bitch yesterday over at Ouchie Street. She was from Shinazaki, though, a middle school like you were a few months ago. Ouchie Street? That's only a few blocks down from Sarabate High, isn't it? It's probably like Uchi Street. Yeah, she was on her way home from school, too, walking alone, so yeah. Ha, but I ain't scared. Hell, that freak is the one who should be scared. He comes after us, and I'll be like, wham, wham. Natsuki whips out a couple quick punches with her free hand. Her ponderous strength is such that the raindrops in front of her are completely shattered. Truly impressive. Heh, <laughs> maybe I should become a crime-fighting vigilante with fighting skills like those. You can even do the whole double life shtick. Oh, woe is me. I must choose between fighting criminals or studying for my mathematics exam. <laughs> you dork. I never go away. Those superhero types don't just quit their jobs or stop going to school. Would save them a lot of headache and heartache, wouldn't it? Presumably it's because being a vigilante isn't really a paying job. Well, yeah, that's just why you loot the guys after you beat them up. Loot them? Like in a video game? They're criminals, right? So they gotta be carrying all sorts of cash from mugging and burglary and drug dealing and shit. And that's just from the thugs, too. Once you graduate to the mob bosses and super villains or whatever, strip their evil lairs clean for cash and valuables. You're gonna be rolling it, though, by then. That does raise a few ethical questions, though. Like, if these guys are criminals and super villains, their money came from somewhere, right? It's probably all blood money. Knowing that, would taking that money for yourself really be the right thing to do? 
You're thinking way too hard about this. Besides, where's it go if it's not in your pocket? To the government? Fuck that! Well, for what it's worth, it sounds like you'd make a pretty interesting and morally complex superheroine. Right? I'd be called... The Vulture! Pretty sure that already exists, and is also a villain. As Natsuki and I continue on across the parking lot and towards the stool's doors, I look around among the throng of bobbing umbrellas to see if there is anyone I recognize. Izumi's face is the first I notice. He laughs, wildly gesticulates, and occasionally wrestles with his circle of equally unenthusiastic er, dude-bro friends. Yeah, there's no way I'd fit in with that crowd. A flung mane of glossy black hair stands taller than most, her dark skin making her ever more noticeable amidst the blur of indistinct faces. It's Kazori! As expected, most of her classmates give her a wide berth. She is a single reed in a pool, suffocating in its shallowness. I can scan the tops of everyone's heads, knowing another who stands above the rest. It's Yuri, of course, a striking sight in her statuesque grace. The crowd pays her no mind, and she pays them none in return. I'd have thought someone as beautiful as her would be more popular. Natsuki and I close our umbrellas and head inside the school to be welcomed by warm and dry air. Thank fuck it's a Thursday! Oh my, is our first class! Those cupcakes we made were awesome! Did you finish yours already? Nah, no. It's only been two days. I'm rationing them as my only meals. Heh! <laughs> you like to take it slow and steady, huh? I getcha, I getcha. I wonder how my uniform shoes feel about having to share a locker with my damp, dingy sneakers. I bet this would make a compelling story on class structure or something. Alright, kid. We need to get hustling. And try not to get crushed in the crowd, okay? 